Eastern hunter-gatherers were a group of Mesolithic Europeans. Their culture and language do not, however, form a continuum with present European culture and linguistics. Their culture and heritage are, for lack of a better term, extinct. Although they did greatly contribute to the ethnogenesis of Europeans, they are a mixture of Western hunter-gatherer or Gravettian-related people with ancient North Eurasians. However, with certain calculators, they also seem to have affinities to Caucasus hunter-gatherers. In the Mesolithic, Finland, and most of European Russia north of Voronezh was inhabited by Eastern hunter-gatherers. As the Ice Age ended, more and more land was available for them to expand, and they took advantage of this extra space living in mostly small, isolated communities. Their lives revolved around the hunt. They tracked mammoths, reindeer, and other beasts across vast landscapes using their expert knowledge of animal behavior and the environment. But they were not just hunters, they were also gatherers collecting berries, nuts, and other edible plants to supplement their diet. As the Ice Age waned, the eastern hunter-gatherers experienced a cultural shift. They began to settle near rivers and lakes, becoming some of the earliest known fishers. This is where the fascinating story of the Antrea fishing net comes in. Discovered in present-day Finland, this ancient net made from willow bark dates back to around 8,500 years ago. Its intricate design and construction provide a glimpse into the innovative minds of our ancestors. Life for the Eastern hunter-gatherers was not only about survival, they also had a rich culture, filled with stories, music, and rituals. They created beautiful artifacts like pottery and jewelry, and left behind mesmerizing cave paintings that still captivate us today. Now let's fast forward to the present day. Modern genetic studies show that many of today's European ethnic groups carry the DNA of these ancient Eastern hunter-gatherers. The Komi people of Northern Russia, for instance, have the highest portion of Eastern hunter-gatherer ancestry of any modern human group, followed by the Finns, the Irish, and Balts. Eastern hunter-gatherer ancestry is present in every people group that has Indo-European roots, as Proto-Indo-Europeans were partly EHG in origin. In this video, we will explore the autosomal DNA, predicted phenotype, and traits of one Karelian hunter-gatherer. He is special because his paternal lineage is determined to be JM267, which is a Middle Eastern haplogroup that isn't found in ancient North Eurasians or the Western hunter-gatherer. Does he have Caucasus ancestry? Let's find out! Let's get into the phenotype of this individual. This is an individual from Yuzhny Aleni Ostrov in Karelia, South Reindeer Island in Karelia. And um, this is what he's predicted to look like. He's predicted to have brown eyes and snub-shaped nose. We can't really tell his hair color from his DNA. We can't really... He doesn't have a lot of genotypes for hair color. But he, what, we, what we do know from his genotypes is that he does not have BH3, blue haplotype 3. Uh, he does not have this. He uh, does have two derived variants in this variation of TIRP1. I actually wrote all of the uh, genotypes that he does have for pigmentation and morphology on the screen. Uh, he does not have any of the MC1R variants for ginger hair. He does have one Oka2 uh, well, he does have uh, one location at Oka2 where he's got two derived variants, higher odds of green eyes relative to blue with amber center and slightly lighter eyes, but it's not a particularly important variation. He doesn't have the other two variations in Oka2 that are also not quite as important as BH2 or BH3, for example. And um, he's got some genotypes for snub nose, in fact, more genotypes for snub shaped nose than Greek shaped nose, and that's why with my tool he's predicted to have snub shaped nose. And for eye shape, uh, with my IID tool, he's predicted to have Amerindian or South Asian or Oceanian eye shape. So kind of not quite European eye shape is what we can determine from his file. He's got uh, this genotype which predisposes him to asthma if he was exposed to smoke uh, below the age of 4. Uh, very interesting genotype. It's pretty rare. As you can see, only 8.2% of cogen users have this genotype. Uh, he's got another genotype that's pretty rare that predisposes him to type 2 diabetes and obesity. And this one, as you can see, um, only 11% of code gen users have this genotype. And he's got this genotype which uh, kind of impairs muscle performance and makes him more likely to be an endurance athlete rather than a power athlete. He's got this rare genotype that is linked to color blindness, but as you can see, other users uh, probably on code and have confirmed that they are not colorblind despite having this genotype here, so it's maybe not the best predictor. And he does have this genotype which increases the risk of cleft lip by 2.4 times. Cleft lip is when your 
uh, upper lip is kind of opened up and your the root the roof of your palate is missing a uh, very morbid disease he's got this rare genotype as you can see only 1.6 percent of cogen users have it and that increases the risk of heart disease uh, he's also got he does have the european uh, variant that protects from myopia which is pretty cool myopia is when you can't see in the distance without glasses now let's move on to his polygenic traits he's got a above average risk score for coronary heart disease an average risk score for crohn's disease uh, he's got an average risk score for hypertension or high blood pressure and he's got a low risk score for parkinson's disease and he's got an average risk score for asthma now the question we all want to answer is does this individual have uh, CHG admixture. Is this individual part Caucasus? Now, um, what we know about Eastern Hunter Gatherers is, is there they are roughly two thirds ancient North Eurasian plus one third Western Hunter Gatherer, and ancient North Eurasians did have affinities to people of the Caucasus. Uh, when you model ancient North Eurasians on GED match, for example, they will always score a lot of Baloch, they will always score a lot of CHG. Ancient North Eurasians simply have affinities to Caucasus groups by the virtue of being ancestral to these Caucasus groups, right? But this Eastern Hunter Gatherer is scoring 18% EHG with MDLPK11, which is meant to represent a Caucasus, uh, Caucasus affinities. So he does have Caucasus affinities, once again. Relative to the Western Hunter Gatherers, for example, this individual has Caucasus affinities. However, with the Oracle, he just seems like a typical European hunter-gatherer, and I don't see any uh, clues to him having any kind of Caucasus admixture. Uh, you can see he's getting modeled as a mixture of Karelian plus Scandinavian Mesolithic hunter-gatherer, so uh, mostly European hunter-gatherer or Siberian Ice Age plus Swedish Matala Mesolithic, a mixture of Siberian Ice Age is, of course, ancient North Eurasian here, uh, plus European hunter-gatherer. Pretty typical stuff for any um, Eastern hunter-gatherer to score. This is what he scores with Harappa World, and you could really look at this 12% Baloch and you could say, yes, he does have Caucasus admixture, that's where his haplogroup is coming from, because he does have Caucasus or West Asian admixture. But you have to keep in mind that if you run an ancient North Eurasian through Harappa World, they're going to score like 20% Baloch. So this affinity to Baloch, uh, it's, it's existing in ancient North Eurasians as well. Ancient North Eurasians had this affinity to various West Asian people. Even on a PCA plot, if you do a G25 PCA, for example, ancient North Eurasians are closer to various West Asians and South Central Asians than are, for example, Western hunter-gatherers. Much closer. It's not even comparable, right? But we have to really determine, does he have any kind of additional admixture from Caucasus hunter-gatherers uh, that is separate from the affinities that ancient North Eurasians had towards all of these groups, and it doesn't look like he has any additional Caucasus hunter-gatherer admixture. This is what he scores with Dodicat K12B. Interesting that he's scoring 8.5% Siberian. I think on this calculator, Siberian is just acting as a sort of like a proxy for Amerindians, because typical it's typical for Eastern hunter-gatherers to score a lot of Amerindian. But Siberian, in my understanding, is more East Asian shifted than Amerindian. But I guess here it's meant to represent some kind of Amerindian input. Uh, with Pun DNA LK10, this is what he's scoring. 20% CHG once again. That's because of CHG or Caucasus affinities that were present in ancient North Eurasians. That's not because this individual is actually 20% CHG. That would be uh, very crazy if he was 20% CHG. You would instantly be able to see it. And 8% uh, ASI, once again, that's due to the affinities that existed between ancestral North Eurasians and uh, ancestral South Indians. This is what he scores with Pandian LK12. Here, the score for Caucasus HG is kind of high. Uh, this calculator is a little bit better at discerning European hunter-gatherer plus from Caucasus hunter-gatherer admixture. So him scoring 11.5% Caucasus hunter-gatherer with this calculator is pretty interesting. It's you know, different from the other results we've seen previously. And the fact that he scores 2.2% Natufian with ancient Eurasia K6 by Gidrosia DNA, uh, that's once again quite surprising because this is not something you would expect in an um, Eastern Hunter Gatherer. Maybe this is just noise, but if it's not noise, then it's some kind of Southern admixture that he has. And he's getting modeled actually as a mixture of Steppe in Neolithic, which is like Hvalinsk, or people who basically have or rep and people who already have a little bit of uh, Caucasus admixture. So according to this oracle, he actually does have some Caucasus admixture, uh, which is very interesting. I'm not sure if he does or if he doesn't, because um, with what I've seen previously, it does not look like he has Caucasus admixture, but with this oracle, uh, it's kind of a different story. This is what he scores with Gidrosia DNA. It's pretty surreal that somebody who doesn't have any actual East Asian admixture 
unlike, for example, modern Finnish people who do, uh, is scoring 17.5% East Eurasian admixture, whereas modern Finnish people who actually have like Siberian input, uh, they score like 5 or 8% East Eurasian. So it's pretty interesting that this Eastern Hunter Gatherer was actually objectively much more East Eurasian than modern inhabitants of this area are, even though he did not have um, Siberian admixture and he was not speaking a Finno Ugric language. But um, let's talk about the Caucasus and uh, the West Asian admixture. Do you think this individual had it? I don't think he did. I think that the prediction for Gedrosia K6, ancient Eurasia K6, I think that prediction was simply done with uh, not a lot of SNPs. It was done with, I think, 1.5k SNPs. But you can test it out. You can uh, put them on GED match and run them through all these calculators because the file will be in the description of the video as always. But I don't think it's just a very good prediction. And I think the 2% Natufian there is just noise. It's not real. Uh, it's not actually... A, he doesn't have any southern admixture. But it, it would be it would be a good explanation for his haplogroup. If he did have Natufian admixture or he, if he did have southern some kind of southern or west asian or whatever caucasus admixture that would explain his haplogroup